بسم الله ربي يشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأخذ عقبة من لساني يفقه القولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So Dr. Leonard Sachs writes Why Gender Matters What Parents and Teachers Need to Know About the Emerging Science of Sex Differences um, The main thesis of his book in the blue at the top The failure to recognize and respect sex differences in child development has done substantial harm And to quote him in the book, um, he says Our society suffers Anxiety and depression are on the rise among girls and disengagement among boys. Um, these statements echo uh, two of his other books that he mentions um, throughout this book. Um, girls on Edge, Why Do Many Girls Feel Anxious, Wired, Obsessed, and What Parents Can Do, and Boys Adrift, uh, The Five Factors Driving the Growing Epidemic of Unmotivated Boys and Underachieving Young Men. If you're looking at this slide wondering, hmm, is there more to this book? Um, yes, the colors here are a hint, and I truly think this book is genius, and we'll get into that, inshallah. Um, the book is written as a self-improvement manual, so anecdotes, thoughts, data, anecdotes, uh, statistics, thoughts, anecdote, back and forth like this. So. It's a must read for anybody who interacts with children, explaining the differences between the sex, but it's also a very fun read. If you're married, you're going to get a laugh out of a few anecdotes in the book. So it's worth reading and you're going to learn a lot about how to interact with children. Um, Dr. Sachs is actually just a family uh, practitioner. Um, he's seen thousands of families in his uh, practice. He's also visited hundreds of schools to you know, develop his understanding of this topic. So I feel like he does a great job at achieving the goal that he set out to do, which is to um, give practical recommendations to adults on how they can interact with the children to support them as they are, um, supporting their personality, their traits, their sensitivities, their orientations, and their identity. We'll get into that into, in a minute, inshallah. Um, he starts off with um, a few anecdotes. Um, she says, this stinks, and he says, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't smell anything. There are immense hardwired differences in the brain, in the cells of the body, in the way that a man or a woman can hear, see, and smell. These are hardwired differences. Um, he goes into the behavioral differences between boys and girls. Um, basically, uh, how he gives recommendations on how to raise a smart boy who doesn't accidentally kill himself and how to raise a smart girl who's not afraid of taking reasonable risk. So there's a difference in the behavior of boys and girls. Um, a conclusion from his book, not the main thesis, but a main part of the thesis, is that our American school system harms children. Um, boys five to eight years old are diagnosed with ADHD left and right just for being boys in the classroom because the system doesn't recognize the differences, the hardwired differences between boys and girls. And at the higher level, um, the curriculum is designed and the books are designed in such a way that students are just made to feel like physics is just for boys. There's nothing in it for girls. Um, so that's the first half, we could say, of his book. He goes into advice uh, towards parents uh, dealing with their teenagers, with the main um, temptations and, and difficulties that they face. Um, video games, social media, drugs, and he explains the differences between boys and girls in this regard. He also goes into the conversation of how teenagers, um, boys and girls, engage in sex for very different reasons. And he explains that at length in this chapter. Um, and he also explains how the modern day hookup culture makes the tensions around sexual intercourse very different today than they were 10, 20 years ago. Um, this chapter, however, I felt it wasn't fully in its place in the book because the entire book is about recommendations to adults and he gives plenty of recommendations. This chapter, however, explains but doesn't give much of a recommendation. It's just, this is how girls are faced with tensions and this is how boys are faced with tensions. Um, however, this chapter, I realized after I finished the book, is the first cornerstone piece of a second thesis, which was the hint in the first slide in the book, which is that he basically destroys the ideology that there is no LGB without a T. 
he destroys this ideology in a few steps. So this was the first step to explain how boys and girls are different in the way that they uh, experience the tensions regarding sex. The second step in that um, second thesis is he explains that there are boys and girls who are not typical. They're hardwired the same. Boys are still hardwired as boys, but their behavior is more girl-like effeminate boys, and then the flip side for tomboys among girls. And he explains very importantly that an effeminate boy is at a much higher risk of depression, anxiety, social exclusion than a tomboy. And then he goes to the next step and explains that a gay teenager is at a much higher risk of depression, anxiety, even suicide than a lesbian girl. And he gives advice to parents and teachers accordingly. He says, if you have an effeminate boy, or if you have a gay young man, then support them to be who they are. So this is where us Muslims we would have a disagreement with. But he says, if you have an effeminate boy, find social groups where he can figure out and realize that there are many effeminate boys and interact with them. If you have a gay teenager, let him meet other gay boys so that he can grow into a fully accomplished gay, married gay man. Um, so this is not the main thesis of the book, but it's a stepping stone in what I mentioned, which is that he pushes back, assertively pushes back against the ideology that humans are genderless, that this ideology that celebrates transgender, celebrates the mutilation of kids and their organs. Um, this is an ideology, the, the theory that gender is just a social construct. Um, that theory goes that you should help boys grow up to be more like girls, and girls to grow up to be more like boys, and then everybody will be more happy and more mature when they grow up. Um, he says that this theory is driven by ideology and shows absolutely no interest or even awareness whatsoever of the hard facts, the data, uh, the scientific knowledge that we have on this topic. And he laments that this theory is carrying an alarming impact on our ability as a society, as an American society, to successfully help children grow into mature adults. So this is the second thesis uh, for which he has these three steps. First, he explains how boys and girls interact with the tensions of sex, and then he explains how to interact with an effeminate boy and a gay teenager, and then he goes into the fact that this concept of transgender is a, uh, a, a monster that we should never have started up started and we should never include it in the LGB uh, paradigm. So um, the book basically, Gender Matters, is two different theses uh, as far as I felt. Uh, the first one is that uh, kids will grow more mature and more accomplished if the adults around them are aware and interact with them according to the differences between male and female, the hardwired differences and the behavioral differences. But then the second thesis of the book is that the um, I, to me this is a this is a brilliant book in the way that he gains the trust of the reader by fun anecdotes, hardcore I mean hard data, scientific data, and then towards the end of the book he says, look guys, uh, there's there's no way like that's the brilliance of the book. It's a subtle and assertive pushback against that uh, genderless ideology, the transgender ideology that celebrates when somebody feels like they're born in the wrong body, that they were assigned the wrong gender at birth. Um, so it's, to me, it's a very uh, extremely useful read, even if you're not into that uh, debate of uh, LGBT um, still as an adult to interact with children. This is a very useful book. Um, since this is part of an interfaith um, dialogue or interfaith class, I will mention that I, you know, I wish that his chapter about gay and lesbian was written more uh, generically. He advises for parents to find a group of gay men or gay teenagers to help their gay son to become a gay man. Um, of course, uh, we would not agree with that. He could have been more uh, subtle, more generic about it and say, just do whatever your faith-based um, practice would recommend. But for sure, the data he presents about you know, the hardwired differences and why men are gay are, is, very, is, very, is very useful. Um, and this is what I had, Barakallahu Fikum. This picture, and I realized that uh, this picture is very relevant because the girl is enjoying the colors. The boy is not interested in the colors. He's just interested in the action. And that's hardwired. 